into the kitchen. We're coming into another living room, actually, because this room is large enough and furnished in such a way that the family often gathered here, even during the preparation of meals. And with a table handy, we sometimes uh, ate short, brief meals here, even though the dining room was constantly used for regular meals. In this room are several items, maybe out of the ordinary for a kitchen. Uh, for example, this um, was a milk safe. This cabinet was a milk safe. And where you see solid wood right now, uh, they did have screen wire. Again, this cabinet was on the porch to catch the breeze and pans and ba pails and, and uh, pitchers of milk were put here uh, to be saved uh, as best they could because you see they had very little refrigeration, a little ice but not much and that hand carried. And uh, now it is uh, sort of a hold all for uh, preserves, for jars, for cookbooks and uh, cooking utensils that are not used very much. These captain's chairs have been um, enjoyed by the family, used at different parts of the house. And they're comfortable and uh, well designed. They are against a table that came with the family from uh, Kentucky, from Bowling Green, Kentucky. It looks like a small round table now, but it does have seven extra leaves which can be put in and then it pulls out in this fashion and is quite a long table. The extra legs which go in the middle to support the weight are lying on top as you see and uh, eventually it will be stretched out again to full length. In the corner is the scroll saw as my father called it. It would probably be called a jigsaw now. <clears throat> the uh, scroll saw was quite a popular thing for hobbies, uh, for hobbyists back in the 1880s and 90s. It was bought by my grandparents for their older son, Asher. But Asher was not inclined toward this kind of interest. He was not uh, one to want to use his hands on artistic work. He was talented in writing and uh, mixing with people and helping in volunteer work, participation in all sorts of social circumstances. So he showed little or no interest in the scroll saw. My father, much younger, was very much interested in it because he enjoyed using his hands. And he asked if he might uh, uh, try out the scroll saw. And when he was given permission, he turned out to be very expert in using it. You saw in the parlor the river boat that he made, handkerchief box he made, several easels, and various other things throughout the house, including picture frames. Here, as you look at it, you can see that it operated something like a sewing machine, having the pedals on the floor for power, an old-fashioned sewing machine that would be, and you see the uh, vertical saw, the very thin metal vertical saw, which did the cutting. Also, to the left of the vertical saw, you see a few scrap pieces of wood. The point was to design on a thin piece of walnut and whatever was to be made. And then this object was held up to the saw and the object was moved around very carefully so as to cut out what needed to be cut out but not damage what was left. It was meticulous work. And uh, L.K. Smoot, Lawrence Smoot, my father, seemed to uh, be very successful. He did so many good things with that. Our next piece to look at is another cabinet over here, which again was a safe to begin with. Now uh, this one was entirely handmade, as perhaps you can tell by the design. Uh, the ends, the sides rather, are of tin, which has been perforated into a design, letting the air in. And the original screen wire is still on this particular cabinet. It uh, is an old, old piece. 
Everything else in the kitchen now is uh, utilitarian, uh, including the table right in the middle, which has an interesting transition or evolution. This center table was originally a stove, an iron stove. The whole of the table is, is uh, iron. <clears throat> you can see perhaps that the under parts are solid iron and uh, this on top is the part that has had the transition. All of the cooking uh, parts were taken away and my father, again, using his hands and enjoying that work, made a level table, as you see, and he covered it with zinc. He was very fond of zinc, as he was of mule hide. He covered many of the tables and desks in the house with mule hide because it was handsome and long-lasting. <clears throat> uh, the zinc, he felt, would be also handsome and long-lasting in the kitchen. At one time, when the Heritage Society had a tour through the house, one of the docents in the kitchen told me later that a man in the group turned out to be a surgeon. And when someone asked why was my father so taken with zinc, the surgeon spoke up and said he knew because zinc was one of the metals that would carry or hold or transfer the least bacteria. It could be cleansed most perfectly. And in a kitchen, therefore, it would be uh, a great uh, benefit. I don't know that my father knew that. He never mentioned it, but I thought it was an interesting point. And there are tables out on the porch where he also covered everything with zinc. Uh, so uh, he contributed a lot uh, to all of the working of the kitchen, though he did not do the cooking. My mother was a wonderful cook, but that's another chapter. So we'll be going out onto the porch now.